Overlanding means different things to different people. To some, it means a short and intense exploration off the beaten track. Four-wheel drive is mandatory, the trail's almost always challenging. To others, overlanding represents long-distance travel, the traversing of complete countries, and sometimes, as is the case with our expedition, entire continents. We're under no illusion that this 46-year-old vehicle is probably not the best choice of rig to drive around the world, but driving a vintage van around the world is part of the challenge for us. Regardless of vehicle choice, us overlanders have one thing in common, and is that we all have to adapt and evolve our rigs so that they can meet the demands of the journey. So during our five-year expedition from Chile to Arctic Alaska, our vehicle was woefully underprepared. So in this video, we want to share with you how we are preparing this rig to overcome some of the challenges that we'll face on this massive journey. We've mentioned these modifications before in our build series and some of this information is going to be new. So we are breaking this down into two sections. This video is going to be about how we are extending our time off grid. Extending our time overlanding in a small form factor adventure rig has a lot to do with space management. You must bring all of the essentials to live off grid and on the move. To keep weight at a minimum, we bring limited equipment. Each item in our adventure rig must be essential to our expedition. Storing it in a functional, easy access and lightweight system is the key. Ah. Back in 2018, right before we left the Pacific coast of the Americas, in the weeks before pointing our compass east and beginning the long drive to Australia, we called into a tiny town in central California, Los Osos, home to leading experts in campervan modification, Go Westy. My name is Jad Josie. I'm the general manager of Go Westy Camper Products. Go Westy is all about innovating for VW campers. So we supply parts and accessories for these iconic vehicles. Go Westy are our overlanding consultants for this expedition. They have a strong R&D team who develop equipment to improve the capability of these iconic vehicles. They also love a good adventure. By the way, that's Sahi's Go Westy CEO and Taylor, the VP. This is what I meant by they love an adventure. Yes, they are a business that develops parts, but they also own and drive these vehicles daily. Their advice and expertise in our build has been invaluable. They helped us build this custom bumper to adapt the Go Westy swing away system for use on our 73 bay window combi. In my opinion, this is the best, one of the best systems you can get for any overlanding or any, what, especially what you guys are doing, you know, yeah. like. I agree. I can't, I, I don't even know how we live without it this long. You know, and like the other advantage of moving all that stuff from the roof down to here is, you know, you save on gas mileage, um, clearance when you're going through That's trees. True. Like yeah. this is right in your strip, uh, slipstream. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a very good point. Another option with your spare tire setup is this reverse spare tire carrier where the spare sits backwards so you can get the storage space. Uh, yeah. It's cool because it, it turns the, the, the width of the wheel into a nice little storage area where you can fit, you know, toe straps, more bulky stuff out. Totally. I like the idea of putting all the weight over the back of the bus as well, because it's that's much better. When you start piling weight on the front, like it, you really notice it oh, when, yeah. on, when you're off-road, you know? Due to the limitations of our US visa, this was as far as we got. We had to put the swing away system design on hold at that time until we had driven across the USA and shipped our combi to Europe where the Combi Swing Away Bumper Evolution continued on my home island of Jersey.
this is the complete setup for the rear storage and the swing arm system. We ended up putting the door on the inside so when it's locked people can't get into the door here because it looked like it'd be quite easy to get something behind here and pull it open. So we've done that so nobody can get into it when it's closed and it's very secure. All I need to do now is fix the attachments to the gutter here. Oh, we need to reinforce the gutter where the um, boxes and stuff are in the back. So I'm just cutting up a pipe here and then I'm going to use the stuff to rubberize it so it's not going to scratch the paint and the metal. And then we're going to just yeah, put it in the gutter so it just makes it a bit stronger for the clamp to clamp on. Let's coat it in rubber so it should dry in about half an hour. It gives it a nice rubber coating. Having this jerry can on the side here and on the back is just a great location for us. It gets it out of the way. It's not blocking any view in the back of the window. Um, and I wasn't going to start this expedition without a decent jerry can. I don't know about you guys, but I've had terrible luck with plastic ones. They never last very long. They're, they're not very strong if you drop them or you store them and something hits them, they can crack easily. A steel jerry can was an absolute must. I look to see which ones that NATO and the military are using and um, they're using the Wavian one. So I got this Wavian jerry can. Uh, I got it from jerrycan.co.uk. They supply all sorts of um, different colors um, for water, for diesel, for fuel. Um, and they also have these really cool um, carrying units which can be locked, which is really important for us because I can't tell you how many times, actually I can, three times I've had jerry cans stolen from the outside of my rigs. The seal on the lid on these are replaceable, so if they do perish after time, you can replace them and continue to use the jerry can. They seal down really tight when you, and they've got a pin that goes in and pushes it down even further so you know you've got an absolutely secure lid and you're not going to leak any fuel, which is why it can be stored on its side. Compare that to a plastic lid on a cheap jerry can that you get from a gas station. This is just in another league entirely way better. I've got to say, after using the swing away system for a few months now, um, this system is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favorite features about the van. It's just completely freed up um, so much space inside that we were previously using for mechanical um, tools and jack stands and oils and all stuff you didn't really want to keep in the van. Having the tire on the back is way safer than having it on the front like a lot of people do. Um, it's just worked out to be brilliant. It's one of my favorite features of the van and I would highly recommend anybody with a Volkswagen or any van to be honest to get something like this. I will say that Go Westy absolutely had it on the money with having these reinforcing bars attaching to the gutter at the top here. If you've got any kind of weight in this system, in this box, on the trays that they provide, or with something a little heavier like the tire uh, and wheel, it's definitely worth securing it because on its own, just on the bumper, if you're on a long bumpy road, you will get a bit of movement and over time that may cause an issue, which is why the Go Westy Swingway system, they put bars on their system up to here and why we have copied it in, in our replica. As well as the rear bumper, as is typical with overlanding vehicles, we needed to make use of the roof storage. So we fabricated a low profile roof rack. Not a great moment having to drill holes in our finished roof, but um, it's necessary. This is a much better roof rack solution. So it would be worth it in the long run, but I'm pretty nervous about doing this. Okay, so since we are making holes in the roof, um, we're using stainless steel hardware to go through 
and, and nuts and bolts in most cases, but we've got two really good fixings into our strong beams, which uh, are over the B pillar and near the C pillar. So we've got this tool here. Um, what is this called? What does it do? This is for checking rafters, right? Yeah, nod. Cameraman nods. Um, so my dad uses this for checking rafters and stuff. So hopefully it should be green and then it should turn red if there's wood behind it, which is, um, fingers crossed, we're in the right place. So. Yep. So right there where we've marked, there is um, wood behind it. So I know that we're in a good place to screw through. This is a really useful tool. Thanks, I'm glad you got this. So I'm fairly confident that this roof rack T-Track is going to hold. It has a huge washer underneath like three or four bolt, four bolts on each side and then two um, massive screws going into a big structural member here and here as well. So this roof rack is not going anywhere. It's not going to be for high loads because it's so high up. This is really just to hold a tiltable solar panel uh, rack, some surfboards and probably an awning as well. But it's necessary. It's not really a good idea to tackle long range rough roads with heavy items up high as well. It affects your center of gravity and also puts unnecessary strain on the vehicle. However, using standard hardware, we're now able to bolt a variety of accessories to our rig using these T-Tracks. Attached to these brackets, we've mounted rigid solar panels. We made a separate video dedicated to our off-grid electrical system, which essentially gives us unlimited off-grid power. But we should mention here for overlanding, we specifically opted for rigid panels, not only because they perform better, but because they significantly reduce the inside temperature with the shade they provide. But mostly because they last longer than semi-flexible panels. And where we are headed, we won't be able to readily obtain replacements easily. Having rigid panels also means we can tilt them so if we're working, say, in winter or when we're traveling near the extreme poles, we can get better solar harvest. Pretty valuable. Another overland modification we made is to install this underslung gas bottle, which is a lot bigger than the one that we used to have. We got this one from Go Westy, and our main fuel source is LPG because we use it for cooking and for our hot water system. So this allows us to stay off grid for longer. We do speak about our gas system more in depth in another video, so go check that out. It explains what our um, safety modifications are and how we installed this gas tank. So go check that video out. This water filtration system that we have installed is absolutely amazing at keeping us uh, off grid for longer. It allows us to source water from a wider range of sources which means that we can extend our time off grid. We have a lot of hacks to share with you on how we extend our limited water off grid so go and check that video out it's well worth watch. The final modification we made to extend our time off grid was adding a lightweight ARV awning. Whilst not typically an overlanding mod, the awning does help significantly with climate control, dramatically improves our ability to stay cool when we're traveling through Hell's Inferno. Okay, that might be a bit dramatic, but it does open up our living space when it's raining and it also helps us feel that we're not cooped up in our tiny home. We were in two minds if we needed the awning for overlanding, but honestly, now we would not be without it. Got to give a shout out to Taylor at Go Westy for this awning. Um, when we swung in to pick it up, they didn't have any in stock and he told me, well, I've just installed a brand new one on my van, it's parked outside. If you want, you can go and take it off there and I'll put a new one in when, on my van when they come back in stock. 
honestly who would do that what an absolute legend that is the kind of people that they are at go westy that's why we're happy to call them friends and we're very very blessed to be able to work with them on this video cheers taylor mate you're a legend Hopefully with these upgrades, we will be more self-sufficient in the challenge to come. Definitely with these modifications, we feel more confident about tackling the world's roads. And a big thank you to everybody who helped us build this rig. We did not do this alone. If you want to watch our build series, um, click the link up here. If you'd like to see a blog post about how we have built this rig and all of the equipment that's in it, that's over there. Otherwise, subscribers, we are very much looking forward to taking you on an adventure. So we'll be seeing you next time. Until then, happy travels.